To strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a former businesswoman and entrepreneur, I'm stunned to see leaders in Congress put forward a half-baked plan like this one, one that threatens massive disruption and chaos released in the middle of the night without any data or metrics to show how it makes anything better, in particular, how it makes healthcare for Americans better. In the private sector, that's the sort of behavior that can get you fired. For a moment, let's put aside that um, less than four, the less than 48 hours that my constituents had to read this bill or that I had to read this misguided bill before it's been jammed through the committee. Let's even put aside the fact that it's being jammed through without any data from the Congressional Budget Office to tell our constituents how many of them can expect to lose coverage or to see their taxes go up. And let's talk about the, the one lady, thing. If the gentlelady would suspend for a minute, I would like to have order uh, in the committee room so we can hear our members as they uh, speak. Uh, please go forward, Ms. Delbeni. Thank you. Let's talk about the one thing we do know. This bill is an enormous tax cut for wealthy Americans. Republicans are trying to give an average tax cut of around $7 million to each of the top 400 highest income households in the country, a tax cut they don't need and didn't ask for. And while they're doing it, they are ripping health insurance away from millions of hardworking Americans, forcing seniors to pay a staggering $3,200 more on premiums every year for less coverage, increasing the cost of prescription drugs for middle-class families, defunding Planned Parenthood on International Women's Day, undermining coverage for women's health care like birth control, breast cancer screenings, and maternity care, on International Women's Day, and decimating the Medicaid program for 62 million children and families, seniors, pregnant women, and people with disabilities. This is hardly what I'd call a great deal or a better way for the middle class, which is what the American people were repeatedly promised by President Trump and Speaker Ryan. No, their idea of a health care plan is a tax cut for the wealthy at the expense of everyone else. And when our health care system falls apart, we will all pay the price. My inbox has been flooded with phone calls, emails, and letters from constituents who are terrified by what Republicans are trying to do. Like Diana from Mount Vernon, whose husband had a partial seizure in his right arm on what was an otherwise a normal night in 2015. Within an hour at the emergency room, they discovered that he had a brain tumor. His surgery and rehabilitation ended up costing half a million dollars. Diana's husband has since developed epilepsy, requiring three different medications, a yearly MRI and regular follow-ups with his doctors. She wrote to me and said, this is his life now. It just proves one minute you're all right, and the next you're having brain surgery. She's thankful for coverage for pre-existing conditions and ending lifetime caps on insurance. The Republicans' bill spells disaster for families like Diana's. And as her representative of Congress, I will not stand for it. I'll fight every day to protect the reforms that have made health insurance accessible and affordable for everyone. We cannot go back to a time when getting sick meant going bankrupt, and that's exactly what this legislation would do. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you, uh, 